Welcome back to the Ultimate Iron Man Skiller series. I know, once again, it's been a long, long time since my previous upload. However, I've recently got that glimmer of hope back for the future of Perfect Skillers. With updates revolving around Dynamite, a few boss reworks, and the introduction of recoils to Magpie Amplings, it looks like Jagex are working towards positive quality of life updates for various different builds. And with that said, I was fortunate enough to have this old account that I made during the time where a group Iron Man could tally other accounts off Tutorial Island. This meant that I had a multitude of zero magic XP skillers that I didn't quite do anything with, as at the time I was so demotivated with the game. Both Rendy and I then managed to complete the feud quest on skillers before the 6 hour login timer had run dry. As in this state of teleporting, you weren't quite considered an Iron Man until you actually logged out. With the use of Vengeance, this was considered quite the accomplishment, as at the time there was really no other way you could feasibly complete the feud on a level 3 skiller with those who are unfamiliar. Now if you're interested in the actual method itself, you can head back 30 seconds or so and read the text on screen, or alternatively I might just post the original edit on Twitter. And you can find that at MaulerOSRS, which will be displayed up on screen and linked in the description. Now with all that babbling said and done, this is what we're actually working with. This is he who shall not be named, the new UIM skiller. The name will be revealed in the future. And to be honest with you guys, the reason why I can't reveal the name is because I actually wanted it to get removed so I could get a space before my name. So I did end up calling it something pretty vulgar and it didn't end up getting removed. So we were stuck with a really bad name for a decent amount of time. So I'm going to be starting this account off in a pretty unorthodox manner. Firstly, I'll just grab some quick cash from steel plate legs and then swiftly move on to the specifics that can ruin a perfect skiller right away. With the money from the plate leg run, we'll quickly pick up our chronicle with a decent amount of charges and make sure to unlock all the premiere codes along the way. Would be rude not to, right? A staple of any new skiller to say the least, completing the Varrock Museum mini quest. Now this will actually come more in handy for us in this particular run as we're in fact focusing on Slayer before we have anything in the looting bag. We definitely have a few little tricks up our sleeve for this one, but I would say it is best to get Slayer done as soon as possible before you're tied down with specific items. So I had planned on knocking out a little bit of Hunter towards 65 for the new recoil update and ended up finishing 10 agility while waiting for the minigame teleport timer to tick down so that we could carry on with more pressing matters. Said pressing matter is the observatory quest, which is actually one of the only quests that you can still technically ruin your skiller as of 2023. And this is due to the randomized star sign assignment from the creation of your account, as some of the rewards unfortunately grant combat XP. Now with all of these little bits out of the way, it's time to finally start grinding Slayer. So to break it down, our goal is to gather 600 Slayer points to unlock both Broader Fletching and Slayer Rings. Crystillia over here is the only Slayer Master that'll grant us a task that has the ability to yield Slayer points at level 3. Revenants at a streak of zero is one of two exceptions that we have to reset, as the 100k fee is just a little bit unnecessary at this stage unless we're streaking. And the other caveat is obviously Ents, which is unfortunately the be all and end all. If we don't have any points at the time to skip the task, it's back to square one. Now, the looming question at hand, am I just chancing combat experience every single hit? And the answer is, in this case, not quite. As you can see here, the Dragon Candle Dagger from RuneScape's 10th birthday event is the key item at play. Quite recently, new content developers that have been working on the various holiday events have forgotten to reduce the negative crush bonus from negative 100 to negative 50. Now, what this means is that instead of rolling a low percent chance to hit, you couldn't actually inflict damage at all. Mind you, both these recent instances had been fixed within, at most, a couple weeks. However, in this instance, the item had been reverted to its intended state, although the special attack rolls by your slash bonus, thus being negative 100, which equals a 100% chance of hitting at zero. Uh, 
I must say, people get up to some pretty strange things in this game. Now then, another little tidbit before we move on to the next task. Back in 2014, the ogre weapons from Diango were also items that couldn't inflict damage, and this lasted for around two years before its patch. So, the reason we're getting this done so quickly into the build is because one, we got nothing to lose, and two, at this stage I'd say the dagger spec is widely known within the skiller community, and I'm sure Jagex are also aware of this too. By the way, I say I'm doing this quickly, and it's in no way quick whatsoever because we have to rely on the spec, and we're also Iron Man so we can't even spec transfer. It doesn't even matter what you're assigned, rather just the amount of mobs that you have to kill. At this stage, after pretty much getting back-to-back -back rev tasks, I needed a break from all that garbage, and decided it would be a reasonable idea to work towards the Audi Cloak, or at least part of the requirements. And in regards to the screen region, my OBS did decide to have a little bit of a mirror, but luckily this only affected a few clips. After completing most of the RD Easy Diary, I now needed to make 100k cash for the entry fee into the Revenant Cave. And unfortunately for me, this was the best bet at such an early level, running steel plate legs from the ruins over to the bandit camp. The general store would also buy the plate legs at elk value, so you would make a little more profit over the other stores, although you still only make around 14k in inventory by selling two per world. This ended up taking me roughly eight runs to accumulate 100k for the entry fee. However, this nightmare did not end here. Unfortunately, I didn't quite get the clip because I did think I would die, but not to an actual player. Some loser made a level 16 mage pure to kill level threes in the Revenant Cave. Which, in hindsight, isn't actually a bad idea, because you do get 100k, but this man did me super super dirty. Nonetheless, I did say that I was going to upload, and it's time to hunker down and persevere. With only 20 odd revs to go, I thought Pyrefiends would be the most logical spot to kill them, as you do have safe spots for both, and it's the most remote of all locations in the cave. Moving on to the third task of the streak, which will be Ice Giants. This task is actually one of my favourites as we can kill them in the Wilderness Slayer Cave, which happens to be in Multi. This means that we can both kill the NPCs in tandem and also have a little more downtime while waiting for spec. I tend to just chuck on a movie or series while doing so. I did unfortunately forget to record the level, but here is the 30 Slayer Milestone. Remember, experience here is halved as we're just receiving the kill credit for the final hit dealt to the NPC. Also, if I forget to explain anything in the video that's pressing any of you, just ask in the comments section below. I make sure to get back to everyone so it shouldn't be a problem at all. Skipping over to our fifth task, which fortunately for us happens to be rogues. Both this task and the next are certainly the most important because the fifth task will set the streak whereas the 6th will solidify enough points to skip an int task if it comes down to that. Rogues in particular have been one of the more relaxed and secluded tasks, as we really don't have to worry about any PKers and we can pretty much AFK. Next up we have Hill Giants, which were pretty straightforward to say the least, we only had one spawn so it was pretty excruciating. With that being said, it was our 6th task, which meant it did secure us enough points to feel pretty comfortable to say the least. Now Ice Warriors were a bit of a tricky one to get to, although the task itself isn't actually bad at all. As you can see, it's super far out of the way, so we weren't at risk of any PKers, although the wander distance of some of the Warriors did tend to be a bit of a mere. I did end up dying a couple of times, but luckily for us, because we decided to start Slayer right away, we risk absolutely nothing. This also meant we could take advantage of death spawning from Deep Wilderness, which greatly helps us with the ease of transport. As most of you who watch my videos would already know, transport on these particular builds is slim to none, especially at this stage of the account. Moving on to our 10th task, which is Zombies. This milestone does also grant an extra 125 point bonus, which will greatly help towards our final goal of 600. This task was also pretty straightforward to say the least, although I did end up coming across a selection of interesting builds due to the recent update to all wilderness bosses and locations. With that being said, it is actually kinda nice seeing the wilderness a little more active than normal, cause everywhere else is like a complete ghost town.
Now, mammoths were also one of those tasks that were quite nice due to the terrain, which meant I didn't have to rely on corner trapping or any silliness that was required for a little more attention. During the lengthy grind of Slayer, I also shifted my focus briefly towards the same kind of build but on a hardcore Iron Man. This was also another one of the accounts that we completed the feud quest on months ago, so I kind of felt obligated at the time to actually do something with it. In retrospect, though it is a nice account and it has had a pretty fruitful beginning, the type of playstyle with a bank and everything just wasn't quite doing it for me. With that said, I thought it'd be best to throw a little brief showcase of the build in this episode as I did actually record some clips for the particular account. However, for now, I think we'll call it a day and set that one to the wayside until the distant future calls. Nonetheless, shifting back over to the UIM where I'll now start skipping through some of the tasks we've already seen. One of my biggest pet peeves is that I want these videos to be both enjoyable yet concise, though if you guys do want anything more in depth you can let me know in the comments section down below. At this stage I felt like I needed a little break from Slayer, so I decided it was the right time to knock out Biohazard to finish off the arty cloak. Not to mention, I also had well over 30 Slayer, so I could actually use the achievement lamp on something reasonably beneficial. Now this is what I call a dialogue manipulation, where you turn the aggression of a quest NPC to your original account right as the mourner is falling to the ground. There are quite a number of NPCs that will end up using this on throughout the series, so there should be plenty more to showcase if you didn't quite get it here. And with Biohazard complete, that is the final step we'll need to achieve the RD Cloak, which will give us one of our most useful modes of transport during our journey ahead. Moving back to Slayer for the second half of the marathon with 90 Fire Giants. I'd have to say this was probably the worst task to date to say the least. With the amount of PKs here, I think I was attacked on the main at least 10 times. And even still, all I would do was just run into the fire giants and then they couldn't even kill me. So it was just more of a waste of my time as opposed to them actually getting the kill. Oh and I nearly forgot to mention that I can finally stop blurring out my name, as we've settled with something that I think suits both myself and the build very well. Black demons are another great task. Lots of XP, good terrain and low wilderness level, which means people tend to just leave you alone. And remember, all these tasks will take roughly the same amount of time as we're pretty much forced to wait for spec every single kill. Moving on to our 16th task, which is Hellhounds. Now, these puppies did give me a little trouble traversing over to them, although once de they turned out to be a pretty mellow task. By de on the main first, I could then use the main to body block for the skiller. This turned out to be quite important as the Hellhound is a 2x2, two two, meaning that corner trapping will tend to occur more often. Receiving Ents at any stage is actually quite problematic for us. The issue with skipping them is the odd distribution in points will mean that we'll have to finish an extra 2 tasks to reach over 600. Nonetheless, a little quality of life tidbit that a friend of mine helped work around was the Entity Hider. The Dragon Candle Dagger has the Celebrate option as its highest priority, one that you can't conventionally change. I tried altering the custom menu entry swapper, which does actually have some good custom hides that any skiller should use. I will cover this at a later date, though you can just download this on Runelight and input your custom swaps to ensure you don't bury bones, scatter ashes and other bits and bobs. With that said, you could see the Celebrate input in there, which unfortunately isn't covered by the UI. In hindsight, I was just getting a little too stupid and technical where I could have just hidden my ult using Entity Hider, which would have also solved my problem a lot quicker, messier, but quicker nonetheless. For our final task of the build, we have the tried and true Mammoths. Definitely one of the staple tasks for us being nice and easy and also very close to the Enclave. Now, in retrospect on the decision to start Slayer early, I'd say yes it's certainly unorthodox, but if I were to do this again, I'd just wait and hope that Jagex release a proper fun weapon that has negative 100 crush bonus. I do believe that at some stage it was on the cards for Jagex to look into as it is kind of just a standard quality of life update for skillers, which are now also recognised on the high scores. With all that said, this grind had taken me over 3 days of playtime over the course of a few weeks. However, we're now just that one step closer to the perfect ultimate Iron Man skiller. 
In the following episodes to come, I have some real interesting metas I'm excited to showcase on the channel, certainly things that have never been seen before. Not only that, but I also have the luxury to contrast the clips with my previous videos pertaining to old methods that just aren't necessary anymore. In one of these particular instances, I'm actually going to need the help from you guys. If you know of anyone or you happen to be extremely proficient in PVM, I'll need you to message me in game for further details. My private will always be on, and I'm more than happy to chat with anyone. For those of you who made it this far into the video, I really hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this as much as I did. It really is great to be back. And if you're not already subscribed, a simple click of the red button is very much appreciated, and it also keeps me motivated to carry on uploading for all of you. Other than that, until next time, have a lovely day.